Hey everyone, it's Natasha and today I'm going to show you a brand new program by Matthew C. And this is called AIM, Accelerated Individualized Mastery by Matthew C. And this is addition and subtraction. So basically what this is, is an intervention program designed for older students, so not your five and six year olds, but older students who may have some gaps in their learning or their understanding or may have some math anxiety. And the reason for that is they don't have automatic memorization of those addition and subtraction facts. So let me show you what this program is and what it comes with. So it comes in this super nice box, first of all. Okay, let's take a look, look at the back. So what's in the box? We get the integer block. So this is not like a full set like Matthew C. sells with the other programs, but it has enough for what you need for this program. You have a resource guide, fact check cards, math fact strategy posters, and colored pencils. So what is AIM? Accelerated is targeted focus on math fact strategies. Individualized is varied instructional methods for student-centered learning. Mastery is conceptual understanding, not just rote memorization. And so it says students who struggle with single digit addition and subtraction facts often develop strategies to hide their lack of mastery. As they progress in math, these coping mechanisms can become inadequate and hinder their learning. The targeted AIM approach uses unique math C strategies and distinctive manipulatives to allow students to confidently master these fundamental facts. You also get a digital toolbox access, which is fundamental to this program. And on the digital toolbox, you'll have videos that are intended for the parent to watch before you teach the lesson. There's also all kinds of worksheets. Um, there's copies of the fact cards in there. There's copies of the lessons that are in your resource guide. There's all kinds of stuff in that digital, digital toolbox. It is absolutely a necessity to this program. Okay, so let's open up the box. So first of all, we have our integer blocks here. Okay, so I'm just going to transfer them over here. Now, I just kept everything in the box for now, but um, I would suggest probably putting these integer blocks somewhere else rather than just floating around in this box. So maybe get a Tupperware container and stick them in there. Um, but I wanted to show you everything it comes with. Now, they come in a nice little package, all packaged up, so they're not loose like this when you get the program. Okay, so we'll set those aside. And then the next thing you get is colored pencils because basically what they are going to focus on is really memorizing the colors and how many there are. So in other words, this lilac color, or you might say purple, um, is six. And so they spend the first lesson and they don't move on from the first lesson until they've memorized all of the colors and numbers. So that way, um, when they're automatically seeing, let's say, um, six and four, that makes 10. And they, they don't have to count one, two, three, four, five, six. They just know this is six, this is four, six and four. And they can know that makes 10. And they know this blue one is 10. But that, so that's the first step to automaticity in their addition and subtraction is automatically knowing the color numbers. So anyway, they use colored pencils um, during that first lesson and in some other lessons to help with that memorization. Okay, so you also get the resource guide. We'll go over this in just a second. So we have some papers that are an example from lesson one. So this is something you would print out on um, the digital toolbox. Okay, so these are from lesson one. These are just some examples one color chart we have an integer matching game here these are all found all this stuff is found on the digital toolbox here's an example of how they use the colored pencils okay and then there's also and I'm not going to show you scores or anything but there is a um, before AIM assessment that is found on the digital toolbox. Also in lesson one that you'd give to your student before you even begin lesson one. Okay, 
Then let's talk about the Math Facts Strategy Posters, which I'll show you here. There's a set of 13 posters. They're meant to serve as quick visual reminders of the Math UC Edition strategies used in the AIM program to reinforce concepts. You choose how to display or present the posters for your students' maximum benefit. The materials section in each lesson shows which posters to use, and several posters are double-sided and can be displayed either horizontally or vertically. Students may choose their preferred presentation of the concept. Okay, so let me show you these posters. Now, I am going to put these posters in a binder in sheet protectors. That way we can flip through whatever we need and we can have access to front and back. You can choose to display them however you like. So we have um, build, we also have build this way, okay? Build, write, and say. That is their method, build, write, say. Okay. Then we have addition words. Add in, add in some. We have commutative property of addition. They learn this right in lesson two, I believe it is. Understanding plus two. This is also in lesson two. It's just presented two different ways. Understanding plus nine. This is lesson three. So lesson three, they jump to plus nine. Nine wants to be 10, nine vacuums up one, nine plus five is equal to 10 plus four or 14. Understanding eight. Understanding doubles. Understanding doubles plus one. Making 10, making 9, solve for an unknown. Okay, then we have the fast check cards. These will be used in every single lesson. Students cannot move on until they have mastered all the cards from that lesson three times, and I'll get more into that in a minute. Lessons 1, 10, and 11 do not have cards as the instructional approach differs for these lessons. Like I said, lesson 1 is just memorizing all the colors, numbers of the blocks, so they don't use the cards. But in future lessons, they will use these, so you'll want to, um, you know, these are perforated, so you want to get these all out. And um, you could do it by lesson if you wanted or all at one time. Have a spot to keep these because you're going to be using these constantly, constantly even in a daytime. You'll be using these multiple times, at least three times in a day. So these, you don't lose them. <laughs> but if you do lose them, you can print them out online in the digital toolbox. <laughs> okay, so then we have our resource guide. So this, can, this, is, this resource guide is not consumable. So in other words, you can use this over and over, okay? And also, if you were using this with more than one student um, and you're coloring these in, well, like I said, you can print these fast check cards out in the digital toolbox. But you do wanna work with each kid individually. So even if you have more than one kid doing the program, you wanna work with them separately, okay? But um, the, for the cost of the program, you can use it over and over is my point, okay? So um, I'll try to go through this quickly, but I don't wanna rush through it and I've highlighted a bunch of things because I really want you to understand the program. But basically the table of contents, we have the introduction, program components, how to prepare tips for success, Frequently asked questions and aim lesson, aim what, why, and how, lessons at a glance, lessons 1 to 10, lessons 11 through 22, activities, and next steps. So there's 22 lessons in here. So you might work through this in 22 days. You, it might take longer than that. Um, it's really designed to be six to eight weeks, um, but you can take shorter or longer. Um, but there is some constraints on that, and I'll explain that in a little, in a minute. Okay, so um, AIM. Uh, the following proven instructional methods are used to facilitate learning and retention of math facts. Explicit teaching and modeling of fact strategies. Linking strategic understanding with visual represent representation through the build, write, say process. Practicing to mastery through use of both new and known facts. 
instructing and practicing in frequent short sessions. That's very key. We'll get to that. Um, mastery of addition and subtraction facts and the ability to recall them automatically free students to focus on new concepts and skills. And when these facts are not mastered, students can develop ineffective coping mechanisms that mac mask their lack of mastery. Okay, so then we have the program components. I pretty much talked about that. The integer blocks, colored pencils, fast check cards, posters, and then the digital toolbox of components in there. And I will actually insert here some more about the digital toolbox so you can see what is in the digital toolbox. Okay, so the very first thing you'll want to do when you log into the digital toolbox is to click here, this aim for success. This talks about those videos that you want to watch before you ever start the program. So first we have how to administer the assessment, then the welcome and overview, the build, right, same method, fading from the manipulatives, and mastery check. So you're gonna wanna go through all of these before you even start the program. Then you'll go over to the lesson videos and you can see that there's 22 lessons. These videos aren't meant for the child. They are meant for you, the parent. And in the guide that I'm showing you, it tells you, you know, what lesson, what exactly what to do. And so let's click on lesson one. You'll see here that when we click on a lesson, it brings up these different tabs. We have lessons, activities, resources, and assessments. So lesson one, integer blocks, this is the same thing that is in the resource guide. So if we click on this and open it up, it's that same lesson that's already in the resource guide. But if for some reason, I guess you lost your resource guide, it's right here too. Um, or if you wanted to just print it out so you can mark it up or you know write on it or something like that, it's here for you. And then we have activities, and so we have the color key, the integer block matching game, integer blocks, colors, and values, and color by block value activity. So those are all printable resources that you can use for this lesson. Then we have the digital manipulatives. I'm going to click on that to show you that. So the, mani the manipulative tool is um, Matthew C. product that comes with all digital toolboxes. Um, Oh, skip intro. Okay. And so basically you can use these as, you know, digital manipulatives instead of the physical manipulatives. And so there's lots of things you can do with this. We're not going to spend a lot of time on that because it's actually not something that you'll be really wanting to use a lot of in this program. But then we have the addition facts mastery chart. And then we also have the subtraction facts mastery chart. And you will want to print both of those out. Out. And then on that very first lesson is where you're going to find the before aim assessment. So let me recap this. You're going to go through all these videos here before you start. Then you're, wanna, you're going to want to go to lesson videos, lesson one, assessments. Open up that before aim assessment, administer it to your child before you begin lesson one. Okay, so that's kind of like pre-lesson one. You probably want to do it on a day all on its own. Okay, so then lesson two. Again, we're going to see the lessons. We have the actual lesson. That's in the same thing as in the resource guide for you. Lesson two, fact check cards. And lesson two, word problems. Now, these come in your kit, but here they are if you um, need them again. And you also have the word problems, which are in your resource guide, but here they have this printable worksheet where the kids can actually write on it. Okay, so then we have test solutions. We have uh, the word problem solutions and lesson two fading solutions. And then we have the activities, build, write, say, fast fact check-ins and review activities. And then resources, we have the online drill, worksheet generator, digital manipulatives, and then those addition and subtraction facts mastery chart that you would have already printed out from the last lesson. And I'm not sure where this is going to be in the video, but I do say in this video when I'm going through the resource guide that it actually says you probably don't want to use the, um, the online drills and worksheet generator too much during this AIM program, but they are there if you need them. But you really want to kind of stick with the review activities that are in the resource guide as much as possible. But I, so that you might have already heard me say that at this point in the video. 
Okay, and then basically each lesson just goes through. So you can watch the video. You as the parent, you know, can watch the video before you uh, give the lesson to your child. Again, we have everything you need here. The lesson, the fast, uh, fact check cards, the word problems, the solutions, the activities, and the resources. And so every single one goes along like that. Let's go to the last one. We have our lesson, just the same, the solutions, the activities, the resources, and then the assessment. So now we have the after AIM assessment part one, after AIM assessment part two, a placement tool, and the after AIM assessment part two for the student. So first lesson is where you're going to find that before AIM assessment. Last lesson is where you're going to find the after AIM assessment. So I would do that on a separate day than the actual lesson 22. So I hope that gave you an idea of what this is like. And um, okay, back to the rest of the video. Then we have how to prepare. So you are going to, as the parent, you're going to watch these three videos, the Build, Write, Say Method, Fading from the Manipulatives, and Mastery Check before you even begin. Then you're going to give your student the before aim assessment, okay? Then you're going to write that score down in the back of this book on page 71. Um, you know, to not show my daughter's score, I won't do that, but you will do that. And then at the end, you're gonna do it again and you can see their progress. And you might be surprised at the score. I was, I was surprised at this score because they have to know the fact by memory less than three seconds with no counting. So it really does have to be automatic. So if they take longer than three seconds or they have to count and you might notice them, you know, you can notice if they're counting because they might move their mouth a little bit or their eyes look up <laughs> um, when they're counting or you, maybe they'll use their fingers, but you can tell if they're counting. And I would just ask my daughter, did you count on that one if I was unsure? Um, and she'd say, yeah, I'm like, okay. No big deal. And they also tell you to let the kid know, like it is okay to say, I don't know. And it is okay to not know because the more we know of what you do know, the better we can do this. Okay, now here's take a break. So there are breaks indicated between sessions for each lesson and you have to take those breaks. So they're a minimum of two hours. So you could complete a session I mean a lesson in a day, but you have to at least take those two hour breaks between each session. Alternatively, a lesson could take you more than one day, depending on your time schedule, if you know, because you have to take these two hour breaks between sessions, and depending on the student's mastery, because they cannot move on until they have mastered the facts at least three times. You have to have a minimum of two hours, and that says it's because they uh, their brain needs needed rest, and also it makes it possible to optimize memory. It can take some time to digest new information and retain it for future use. So basically, the breaks are ensuring that that information is getting kind of stored in their brain for long-term memory retrieval and not just short-term retrieval. So that's really fascinating, but I'm, I'm going to personally do what it says because I trust that they've done this for a reason. Okay, and then it says to avoid anxiety and stress, and it gives, you know, some ideas on that, and then keep the sessions engaging with movement, crossing the midline, standing, distraction-free environment, and then it has some frequently asked questions. So yes, the program is intended to be a six to eight week intervention in place of a student's regular math program. However, some students may be able to continue their regular math curriculum as they complete the AIM lessons, but others may benefit from focusing just on AIM. So you do it how you wanna do it, but since it is a short term thing, it's not really going to like derail them for long. Um, and are the breaks really important? Yes, yes, we know they are. So yes, do them. On how long should a lesson take? So each session in the lesson is going to be no more than about 15 minutes. But some students may need to revisit a session more than once to master a group effect. So that's why I said it could, you know, one lesson could take you more than one day. How many sessions should be completed in a day? It is important to move at your student's pace than to complete a certain number of sessions or lessons in a given amount of time. And how do I monitor my student's progress and mastery of the facts? You're going to use the fast check cards to determine your student's mastery of the lesson facts. You color in one star on a card each time they proficiently recall a fact. 
The student can track their progress at the end of each lesson by marking the facts from each lesson on the addition facts mastery chart or subtraction facts mastery chart. Those are in the digital toolbox. You print them out. When is it appropriate to move to the next lesson? When all three stars are checked in, then it's time to move to the next lesson. Okay. Um, and then let's see, an AIM lesson. So this kind of tells you what an AIM lesson looks like. So it always tells you prepare. This is what you, the parent, is going to do. It tells you what to watch, read, study, and gather. Um, there's session A, B, C, D for most lessons. Lesson one doesn't have B, C, D because it's just one session. I mean, you just repeat the session over and over until they have it. Um, but session A, present lesson information. Session B, to demonstrate understanding the student is. Session C, their transition math facts to visual memory and session D, assess for mastery. That's where you're going to use um, the fast check cards, okay? And this gives you lots of information here. It's too much for me to go over, but that's just a basic look at what those sessions are, okay? And then aim what, why, and how. Um, prepare for the lesson. Um, session A, present lesson instruction. It tells you what, why, and how to do that. Talks about the build, uh, write, say method. Lesson, uh, session B, demonstrate understanding the what, why, how. It's really important you read all of this. Really, really important. It, it, do this before you start um, so you can understand exactly what you're doing and the point of it. Session D, same thing, what, why, how. Session, did I say D? I meant C. Session D, what, why, how. Okay. Um, and then also on the digital toolbox, there's a worksheet generator and online drills application, but it says to use those sparingly. You actually want to use the activities um, and the fast fact check-ins that are in this program first, okay? So there is the worksheet gener generator and online drills application you can use, but for the purpose of this program, they want you to do, use those fast fact um, check-ins and the review activities that are included in the program as your primary source of maintaining mastery. Here we have the lessons at a glance. So we have all the way from lesson one to 22. So it tells you the materials, the digital resources, the aim for success videos, and it has marked, you know, what they'll be doing in that lesson. And it tells you here what the lesson is about. Integer blocks, addition plus two, plus nine, plus eight, and so forth. And we get into lesson one. This is where there are um, learning the lesson about the integer blocks, okay? So as you can see, there's only a session A here and you take a break before moving on to lesson two. So even at, like, let's say your kid is already doing math, you see, and they, they know this down, okay? That's great. Still take a two hour break before you move on to lesson two, okay? If it takes longer than one, one day for your student to master this, then that's fine. There's multiple worksheets and games and activities on that um, digital toolbox that you can work with. So if this takes you multiple days, no problem. There's plenty to do. Okay, so then lesson two. So this is where we get kind of get into the meat. I'm not going to go through every single lesson, but I did want to go over a couple things. So Prior to beginning this or any other lesson from this point forward, be sure your student has mastered the colors and associated values of blocks one through 10. So like, you can't let them forget that. And before you begin teaching the two facts, practice counting by twos to 10. And it'll say things like that. Practice counting by this, do, do this before you begin this lesson. Okay, and this talks about even numbers and odd numbers. And then you have examples one and two and gives you some information here. Okay, but so what you're going to do is you're going to present this information about add-ins and sum and the commutative property of addition. And we have the posters for that that I already showed you. And you're going to be doing the build, build right say for all of the plus two facts. Okay, so build right say for all the plus two facts plus the information of add-ins and sum and the commutative property of addition. So that's a lot of information in session A. Okay, um, session B, demonstrate understanding. Check that your student can proficiently teach back 
a few selected math facts from the lessons before moving on to the word problems. There is word problem pages to print out right in the digital toolbox. Use the build write same method to solve each problem. Okay, so here's the word problems, but there's also the worksheet with these word problems in the digital toolbox. And then you're going to take a break before session C, so at least two hours. Session C, transition math facts to visual memory. Can your, can your student draw, write, and say the math facts from this lesson? Yes, take a break before session D. No, continue to practice these facts, then take a break. Then session D, assess for mastery. Oh, and here it tells you, I forgot to point this out, tells you each session the digital resources you need. So student copy of word problems, word problem solutions, build, write, say activities. Uh, digital resources for session C are fading solutions, review activities. Session D, digital resources, review activities, past fact check-ins, addition facts, mastery chart. It has a little teaching tip here. Um, but we'll get to that in a second. So session D, assess for mastery using the fast check cards. Can your student recall all the facts covered in this lesson? Yes. Color one star for each fact known. Repeat until all three stars are colored. So you can do that all in one session. No, continue to practice these facts. See and aim lesson session D on page 14 um, for more information on that. And then be sure to that all the fast fact check cards from this lesson have three stars filled in before moving on to lesson three mark each fact that has been mastered on the addition facts mastery chart again this is in the digital resources okay and then try having your student quiz an adult on the math facts if the teacher hesitates or answers incorrectly your student can model the fact with the integer blocks to help correct the answer all right and then we move on to lesson three and again, they're going to practice counting backwards by one before they work on adding nine. And it's session A, B, C, D, taking a two hour break or more between, always has the digital resources you need for each ses session. So that is the basic gist of it. Like I said, there are 22 lessons and they all you know follow the same format for the most part except for those three lessons that don't have session a b c d but um the majority of the lessons have session a b c d and as you can see this book is not for the kids this one is for you the parent um and then in the back it shows you activities these are also all in the digital toolbox and so um, there's also a certificate of completion in the digital toolbox after aim assessments and placement for what you should do after. So I hope that was helpful to you. And if you have any questions, let me know. We are using this right now, we, but we've only done lesson one. So when we are completely done with it, I'm going to give you a review of it and tell you how my daughter did as far as like the progress that she made in this program. So I'm super excited about it. And um, I do suggest having a three ring binder for all these worksheets and also to keep the different game materials in. And in fact, you might want to laminate some of the game materials and also to keep those posters in. So definitely I would say the only thing you need to add is probably a binder and some sheet protectors, but you don't have to, but that's just my recommendation. So anyway, I hope this was helpful and I will talk with you soon. Thanks for watching.